Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 10. Today's topic is torque. The objectives are know the meaning of a translational motion and a rotational motion. To know the meaning of a line of action, lever arm, and axis of rotation. To know torque is always measured about an axis. To know torque is a vector quantity. To understand what is meant by the torque produced by force. To be able to determine the magnitude and the direction of a torque. Now let's consider this uh, situation. Which of the three equal magnitude forces is most likely to loosen the tight bolt? So to loosen the tight bolt, this is a motion of rotation. It's the whole bolt is not moving in translation. It's not translational motion because it's not the bolt as a whole, the center of the mass did not move, but it's rest of the bolt is rotating around its center of the mass O. And that's called a rotation. So which of the three equal magnitude of force is most likely to loosen the tight bolt? So you have three forces. You have FA, FB, and FC. FA will loosen the axis of rotation, but it's not very effective. FB, force further from the axis of rotation, would be mo more effective. On the other hand, force C is directed toward the axis of rotation. You can't even turn it at all. It's not effective at all. So the quantitative measure of a tendency of a force to change a body's rotational motion, that means to rotate it, is called a torque. Torque is a twisting effort. So FA applies a torque about O to the wrench. It is, but it's not very effective. FB would apply a greater torque about O. FC will apply zero torque about O because you cannot twist that uh, bolt at all if you apply a force FC. Now to calculate the torque, the torque of a force about a point is the product of the force magnitude and the lever arm of the force. So it's a product means the times of the force and lever arm. So let's take a look at this situation. So here is an object, it's kind of some kind of disc. You apply force F1, F2, and F3. First, the axis of rotation is the axis that's perpendicular to the plane of the figure and pass through O. So the axis of rotation in this case is perpendicular to this plane. It's going right out of the screen or inside the screen. The next one is a line of action. The line of action is a line along which the force vector lies. So you apply three forces. So there are three lines of action. F1 is the one along the force F1. F2 along the force of F2. That's a line of action F2. And here is a line of F, uh, action of three. In this case, it passes point O. Next one is a lever arm. Lever arm is a perpendicular distance between point O and the line of action. So L1, that's a perpendicular distance. You draw a line from O to the line of action F1. And that distance is called the lever arm for force F1. Here is the lever arm for force of F2. On the other hand, lever arm for force of uh, F3 is a zero because it's passed to the point O. So the torque is defined as the product of force and the lever arm. Torque equals F times L. So obviously the torque for three equals to zero because the lever arm is zero. Hence the torque produced by F3 has to be zero. Now if you go for F1, it will be rotating the object. If you're pulling along the uh, line force F1, apply force F1, the object is going to um, rotate counterclockwise. And we define counterclockwise as positive. If you apply F2, you will rotate this object clockwise. We'll define clockwise as negative. So torque 2 equals negative F2L2. Torque 1 is positive F1, L1. Now torque F3, torque 3 would be 0. 
So one thing is torque is always measured about an axis. About point O, we said torque 1 is F1 times L1. Torque 2 is negative F2 times L2 because uh, clockwise is negative. And torque 3 equals 0 because the lever arm is 0. That is about point O. But if you change that to A, most likely torque 2 will become 0 because it looks like torque 2 will pass through A. Now, on the other hand, uh, torque 3 will not be 0 because the lever arm is the distance between O and the, the line of action. That won't be 0. So torque 3 is not 0. So torque is really depends on your axis O. The unit of torque. Torque equals force times lever arm, force is newton, lever arm is meter. So unit of torque is newton times meter. Remember, this is kind of similar to work, but torque is not work. So we never use joules for torque. We always use joules, at, uh, unit as newton times meter, never joules. Now there are three ways to calculate the torque. By force F applied at point P, Described by a position vector r with respect to a chosen point O. Let's see. So P, force has to be acting at point P. And this point P, how do we describe this point P? This point P is described by the position vector r. So position vector r is you just draw a line from the position O to that P. And that has a direction. That's why it's a position vector r. Vector R has a direction. Okay, <clears throat> so the three uh, ways are, the first one is if you find a lever arm. Lever arm, remember lever arm is the perpendicular distance to the line of action. So here is a line of action along the force. Then you draw a line that's perpendicular to the line of force. This is lever arm. So you can find a lever arm. Then to find a torque produced by F, you use F times lever, lever arm. Next one, you can determine the angle phi between the vector R and F. How do you determine the phi? Phi, if F is this way, R is this way, this is the angle phi. The angle phi is between force and the lever arm. Once you find a phi, then the lever arm the lever arm is this. The lever arm is R times sine phi. So lever arm equals R times sine phi. So torque is F times R times sine phi. F times L, L is R times sine phi. The last one is to represent force in terms F10 and F red. What's F10? F10 is the one perpendicular to R. F red is the one that's parallel to R, parallel to R, that's F red, and that's F10. You know F red does not produce any torque because F red passes O. F10 is the one that's produced torque. So torque equals F10 times R. F10 is F times sine V. So F10, perpendicular component, here is a phi. F10 is opposite, opposite is sine. So F times sine phi equals to F10. So torque equals to F10 times R. So the three ways are force times the lever arm, or force times the R times sine phi, or F10 times the R. So those are the three ways. Torque is a vector quantity. So since R times F times sine phi is a magnitude of vector product, remember in chapter one, we've learned vector product, a vector product, a scalar product, vector product is also called cross product. So torque equals R cross F. So the three ways we figured out, those are just the magnitude. How do we find the magnitude of torque? To find the direction of torque, we have to use the right hand rule. So if you point your fingers of your right hand in the direction of R and curl them in the direction of F, your outreach the thumb will pointing to the direction of torque. So direction of torque is perpendicular to both R and F, which is directed along the axis of rotation with a sense given by the right hand rule. 
Since the sensor diagram involves three vectors, so one of them will have to be perpendicular to the plane. So we use a dot means pointing out of the screen like the arrow pointing out. And across, like the tail of the arrow, means pointing into the screen. So we have left to right, right up and down. We also have inside the screen and outside of the screen to represent the direction of the tour. Let's take a look at this example. So a weekend plumber, unable to loosen a pipe fitting, slips a piece of scrap pipe over his wrench handle. He then applies his full weight of 900 newtons to the end of the cheater by standing on it. The distance from the center of the fitting to the point where the weight act is 0.8 meters, and the wrench handle and the cheater makes an angle of 19 degrees with the horizontal. Find the magnitude and the direction of torque he applies about the center of the pipe fitting. So the direction of the torque, you use right hand rule. Let's take a look. Here is your R, here is your F. So from R to F, the direction will be out of the screen. Now the magnitude. So there are different ways to find the magnitude. First, let's see phi. This phi is 109 degrees. Phi is between R and F. This, this is 109 degrees. So this is 90 plus 19. That's how you get 109 degrees. So you can find the uh, arm over here. The arm is r times sine phi, which is 0.8 times sine 109, give you 0.76 meters. So torque is 900 times uh, uh, the length of the arm is uh, 680 newton times meter. Or you can use torque equals f r sine phi. 900 times 0.8 times sine 109, you have the same thing. Or you can use F10 times R. To find F10, you use F10 is F times sine phi. That's 883.5. So uh, you also have 680 Newton times a meter. So it doesn't matter which way you use. You use the way you are most comfortable with. You should have the same answer. Again, the direction is out of the screen. Let's take a look at another example. So here is uh, uh, the figure shows force P is being applied to one end of the lever length L. What is the magnitude of torque of this force at point A? So this is very similar to last example. First, you need to just draw R then you need to find the angle. Phi in this case is theta plus 90 degrees. So torque is F times R times sine phi. P times L times phi is uh, theta plus 90. Sine theta plus 90 is cosine theta. So that gives you PL cosine theta. That is the answer. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.